In this podcast, I will describe a recent paper of ours, which has just been published in the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology. The aim of this paper, or this study, was to investigate the psychological predictors or the psychological processes implicated in suicidal risk. And to do this, what we did was we recruited a sample, a relatively modest sample, of 70 patients who had been admitted to hospital following a suicide attempt. In a hospital, within 24 hours of the suicide attempt, participants completed a range of clinical and psychological measures. And then, over the next four years, we're able to anonymously and confidentially track these individuals to determine whether they've been hospitalized again for a, a subsequent suicide attempt. And the aim of the study is pretty straightforward. It's trying to see whether if we assess a whole range of measures of psychological and clinical measures in hospital, are they any use in predicting who is more or less likely to try and kill themselves in the future? And the reason this sort of study is important is because if we can just demonstrate that a particular factor, which when we assess in hospital at baseline, has predictive utility, in other words, it can predict repeat suicide attempts, that suggests that it may be useful then to target that behavior or target that thought or cognition or that factor to reduce it and thereby reducing risk of future suicidal behavior. The first set of analyses, we looked at each of our factors, each of our risk factors on their own to see whether each of these factors predicted repeat suicide attempts. And what we found unsurprisingly was that people with more past suicide attempts were more likely to try and kill themselves again in the subsequent four years. The more suicidal you were when we saw you in hospital, the more likely you were to try and kill yourself again. The more depressed you were, the more hopeless you were. And then in the context of the integrated motivational volitional model, people who reported higher levels of defeat, higher levels of entrapment, were significantly more likely to try and kill themselves or die by suicide in the subsequent four years. So the next question is, which of these factors is most important in predicting whether somebody tries to kill themselves in the subsequent four years? Well, to do this, we completed a, a multivariate logistic regression, in particular a hierarchical logistic regression. And what we found from that analysis was that two factors predicted whether an individual tried to kill themselves in the subsequent four years. The first was past suicide attempts. So again, this is an unsurprising finding because we know that often the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So in this context, it was the more past suicide attempts an individual had reported in hospital at baseline, the more likely they were to try and kill themselves in the subsequent four years. And then the only other significant predictor was baseline entrapment. So the more trapped an individual reported feeling when we saw them in hospital, they were, the more likely they were to try and kill themselves in the subsequent four years. So what do these findings mean? Well, what these findings point to is the importance of looking not just at clinical factors like depression and like hopelessness or how suicidal somebody is when you see them in hospital, but what they suggest is it's particularly important to look at feelings of entrapment. So although this is a relatively small study, we would argue that it provides sufficient evidence to suggest that incorporating uh, entrapment as an additional factor would be helpful to incorporate this into, say, risk assessment protocols may have some utility. Now, needless to say, it's important to replicate these findings in, in a larger scale study. So although these findings are promising and we think have clinical utility, there are lots of unanswered questions. For example, we do not know yet whether uh, entrapment predicts first time suicide attempts, or is it that entrapment is a more important variable in repeat suicidal behavior? We don't know whether uh, it affects or predicts suicidality in different populations. You know, we recruited individuals 
from a suicide attempt or population in the existing high risk population uh, from hospital. So do these factors predict uh, in the same way with non-clinical populations? 